Now that we've created our devices and set up some macros, let's look at creating a custom graphical user interface for use with touch screens, desktop PCs, and mobile devices. So in a project tree, see the GUIs section, just right click on that, click add a GUI. Now it's asking me for a name for this new page. I'll just write test, click OK. Now it's going to give me a warning here telling me that I haven't selected an image folder and that it's going to use the default images folder uh, for this GUI page. If you want to change the image folder, you can do that by clicking on the GUI tab and changing the image folder right there. So the first thing let's do is choose a background. We can either choose a background image or a background color. In this case, let's just quickly choose a background color and maybe give some kind of, uh, oh, just a light gray, I suppose. Now, I can right-click anywhere on this background and either change the background color or change the image again or add a button or add a label. Let's go ahead and add a button. So it's going to bring up uh, my button editor and you can see we've got a spot for a normal image and a pressed image. Of course, the normal image is what it's going to look like when uh, the button is not being pressed. And the pressed image is what the button is going to look like when someone is pressing that button. Now we can add some text to the button. And there's a little preview here. You can change the uh, font, size, and color. I'm just going to leave this as is for the moment. And you see we've got uh, a couple of other options down below. The navigation and the actions. You can see there's a separate action for on press and on release. So let's leave this for the on press action. And let's say we want to do an IR command action. At that point it's going to populate with any of the IR devices that we've set up. Choose which device. And let's choose a command. Click OK. And there's our button. Now we can move this around. Uh, if we want to, we can show a grid. Click Show. And if we want to change uh, the spacing of our grid, we can do that. And when the grid is showing, we can. Uh, it'll help us out by snapping our buttons to the grid, so you can line things up nice and neatly. Um, now that I've got one button, and I want to have a lot more buttons that look just like it, I can copy the button right click paste the button now of course I would probably want to go back into the properties for the new button and change the text and um, maybe give it a different IR command and so on and so forth we can do the same thing by adding a label in this case we'll just click add new label and enter some text Again, we can move it around, snap it to the grid, um, we can go back into the properties, change the font, let's make it bigger, and let's oh, give it a magneto font. There we go. Put that down and see if we can make pretty much make our GUIs look however we want them to. Um, another interesting thing we can do on button actions is oh, maybe we want one of our buttons to run a macro like watch DVD and when we want to watch the DVD uh, we also want to go to our DVD GUI page which is one that I've already kinda started I'll click OK click OK now we go into our GUI's section of the tree and we can see both of our GUI pages there um, as I mentioned the DVD is one that I already kinda started and uh, bring that up and a lot of these graphics are freely available on the internet. These ones happen to be uh, some button images that I got from NT Designs, and they have a, a very nice selection of free button graphics available. Um, as you can see, this one, it, it's, it's pretty simple. I've left some room to add some number buttons and some things like that, but it's got all my commands that I would want to do for a DVD player, uh, volume commands. Something kind of interesting about the volume commands that you can do with this, I don't know if you go to the properties of one of these buttons, you can see that I'm using an IR command action to the AV receiver 
and it's sending a continuous pulse of volume up on press. Now on release, you can see I'm doing a cancel continuous on the IR action. So what's going to happen is um, when you press the volume button down, it's going to start sending the IR command continuously until you release the button, at which point it's going to cancel that continuous IR action. So as you can see, um, you can get as in-depth as you'd like with your GUIs. Um, set them up however you want them to look. When you're done editing, just click OK. And once you've created all your GUIs, uh, it's time to go ahead and generate them for use on a device. So let's go to the project tree, right click it and click generate all GUIs. That's going to ask me to browse for a folder, uh, the root folder, which is going to create a new folder containing all of my GUIs and the associated files. So I'll leave that at default and click OK. There, it did the work and it's asking me if I would like to view the contents of the folder that we created. It's going to open up an explorer window now. And you can see there's my two GUI files which are actually uh, HTML files. Uh, some associated JavaScript and all the images that are associated with those GUI files. Um, these GUI pages can be now opened up and tested in the browser of your choice or exported to a web server or your mobile device or whatever you'd like. Now to test our GUI we'll just open it up in a browser and go ahead and start clicking on some of these buttons and we can see that the images are changing with the press and release of the mouse um, my IR commands are being sent and everything's working just as it should